Hello. Today's video contains a history lesson. Now the purpose of this history lesson is not to inflate feelings of anger or level fingers of condemnation against any person or group of people. Instead, the purpose is to bring these events to our awareness so that should we find ourselves in some situation where we are similarly tested as to the morality of any particular course of action that might be presented or put before us, that we can look back through that lens of history and understanding of what has happened before and make different choices when it's our turn. Hello again, good people. Hi, this is Jason from Green Country Agroforestry, your favorite six foot tall, slightly overweight garden gnome. I'm back again for an update on the Single Seed Challenge 2020. I know it's been a while since I checked in, so uh, I'm here to let you know what I was up to. I haven't forgotten about you. Now, as you may know or may not know, this year we're growing a pole bean, a black bean, this bean, specifically this bean. It is a Cherokee Trail of Tears black bean with a lot of history behind it. Not particularly this bean, but the bean in general. Let me find a place to put this for a moment so I don't lose it. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, I'm in the midst of getting these poles ready. They are 10 foot tall. 2 inch PVC pipe that I've tapped holes in at the top and passed this twine through on either side. It is my hope that by anchoring these, spread four foot apart at the ground level, I'll be able to let those beans just climb right on up that twine all the way up 10 feet and we'll get a good load of beans out of these poles. Bear with me a moment. I got to set it in real quick. That's it. That's it right there. There we go. All right. So, where was I? Okay. So we were talking about the Cherokee Trail of Tears being. I told you there was some history history on it. So, since the early 1800s, the newly formed federal government of the United States of America had been wanting to get its hands on that land that was possessed by the indigenous peoples, you know, the folks that were there before the Europeans arrived, down in the southeast. They wanted it pretty bad because no one bothered to check in the book where it says, Thou shalt not covet, huh? Let me get this down. There we go. And I can understand where they're coming from. I mean, Quite a shock, I suppose, waking up one day to discover that the place you've been for the last couple of hundred years already had somebody there living on before you got there. Well, it was such a popular topic in 1829, it was a central theme of then President Andrew Jackson's State of the Union Address. Well, he made an impression on the Congress, and in May of 1830, they handed him a bill to sign that would accomplish that very goal. It was called the Indian Removal Act, and it did pass 29 to 19, that was quite a bit of opposition, that was about 40%. And one of the people that was very outspoken against it, about the Jackson administration in general, was the representative to Congress from Western Tennessee by the name of Davy Crockett. Well, Crockett was so worried, he was so worried that uh, Martin Van Buren, who was coming up to be elected, elected president next, looked like. He was so worried that the Van Buren administration would just keep on doing the same thing that the Jackson administration did, that he wrote kind of an angry letter. Let me read a little bit of it to you. I don't have the entire thing in front of me, just a little excerpt from it. But this is what he wrote. 
He said, I will never live under his kingdom, speaking of Martin Van Buren. Before all I would submit to his government, I will go to the wilds of Texas. Well, Crockett didn't live to see Van Buren elected. See, come 1835, whenever he was up for re-election to his district in western Tennessee, he had gotten Andrew Jackson and Jackson's followers so upset that they ruined his bid for re-election. In response to that, he said quite famously, you all may go to hell. I'm going to Texas. And so he did. And he died at the Siege of the Alamo in 1836. So he never lived to see Martin Van Buren elected in 1837. Well, just as Crockett feared, the Van Buren administration picked up right where the Jackson administration left off, continuing on with their plans for Indian relocation. Let me back this story up a step and explain a, a little bit about the Indian Removal Act. You see, that particular bill did not permit the United States federal government to just walk in and take the land away from the indigenous peoples. No, they had to sign treaties agreeing to surrender their lands to the east of the Mississippi in exchange for lands to the west of the Mississippi, which the United States federal government laid claim to and promised to give them. Now, the nations that we're talking about are the Choctaw, the Chickasaw, the Muscogee, the Seminole, and the Saligi. Uh, you may be more familiar with the name Creek instead of Muscogee and Cherokee instead of Saligi. Well, that's the Saligi bean that we're planting. Figure we may as well call them by the right name. Alright, so the first of those trees got signed in September of 1830 by the Choctaw Nation of Mississippi. That's really when the Trail of Tears story starts. So for the next nine years or so, there are quite a few relocations from the five civilized tribes, as they were called back in the day. I guess they still are. Some of them voluntary, quite a few of them not. All right, let's have a look here. Here we go. So, a month or so ago, I selected this particular seed and pulled it out and showed it to you. Told you what I was getting ready to do. Showed you how to set up these bean poles with the strings. And today, that bean is going into the ground because the soil temperature is warm enough out here that I have a reasonable expectation of germination. All the other spots where I'm planting this type of bean or any other pole bean, I'm planting three. But since this is the single seed challenge, we're just going to plant one single seed. Just put it on the ground, just like that. Push it down to about the depth of my finger, the tip of my finger. Cover her up, firm slightly, and that's it. It's planted. And we're going to be able to tell which one it is because I've got this wooden dowel stuck in the ground next to the twine that that seed is going to climb up, that, that plant is going to climb up whenever it germinates. And here in a few days, a week or so, hopefully, we'll see that plant pop up out of the ground. It's kind of exciting. Alright, let me get the rest of these beans planted. I've got a lot of beans to plant. I've got some. You know, it's good to save seeds, to share seeds, stories. Like the story we've been sharing here about the Saliki, the Trail of Tears, the seas that they sewed into their clothes to take with them. Here in a week or two when these start to come up, I'll come around and I'll show you the, the progress that we've made. Probably then I'll talk a little bit about the Treaty of New Echota and a couple of court cases trying to stop the relocation, which should never have happened. That's all I've got for you today. Good people, I'll catch you next time.